Well, I made it back home. I made it back home. Uh, it's still raining. It's going to rain forever, I think. Uh, I'd sent out a list earlier, an email uh, with five horses. Five horses. I didn't want to muddy the waters. And um, I didn't want to muddy the waters and give you a bunch of horses. Those are five horses that I I believe would fit in that top slot where they might bring a lot of money. Likely they'll bring a fair amount of money. Um, but we did have a lot of clients that have been asking most recently and, and leading into the Lexington sale, listen, you know, we know that you've done well with, uh, you know, with a lot of trotters and a lot of jurisdictions, 18 to almost 40,000, you know, what, what would it be like to get a horse that could maybe supposed to be a good horse? And there's so many. I mean, when you look at Pennsylvania, New Jersey, they're led by million dollar horses, Damien and Maverick. Uh, those two horses were over a million dollars each. Uh, and then multiple horses, well, well over a hundred thousand dollars. So, um, but I do believe there's some horses in here that are going to bring a little more money, maybe upwards of six figures. And, um, I think we can still find value in an expensive horse. And what I mean by that is, uh, perceived pedigree would make it worth a lot more. And we have, as you can imagine, we have a ton of of clients, as I called them last week, pedigree wonks, people that subscribe to all these sites, uh, pedigree matching sites and, and um, sites that give you uh, analytical info and, and numeric values for each cross and uh, X factors. It's interesting uh, hearing people talk about them and it's not that I don't know anything about breeding. Obviously, I've seen most of the horses race and I've seen how well crosses race, but at the same time, uh, there's a lot to be uh, digested on the breeding side of the industry. So uh, thankfully and luckily for us, we have a lot of clients that help us out with that. Um, so those horses are horses that could bring a lot, but for a number of reasons, I believe they may slip through the cracks a little bit. Having said that, not by a lot. They're not going to fall through the cracks. They might slip a little bit, but still going to be quite expensive. Still, five horses I found intriguing that I thought would be uh, undervalued. So we're going to get to, uh, I have a ton of horses to do videos. I almost didn't do this video because I have so many horses to look at when I get to Harrisburg. It's kind of obsolete. As soon as I hit the ground, as soon as I get to the sale, this video means nothing because it's all about how they look. To me, it is all about how they look in person. And uh, having said that, I do want to give people a heads up of where we're looking, what we're looking at. There's got to be 80 horses on this list to do videos on, or at least to look at, to potentially do videos. Then, as I say to you guys all the time, as I get there, sometimes when you sit down and have a drink and look, you watch and see what everybody else is pulling out. Some horses might really catch your eye there. So there's horses that can be missed or, or lost that we may find in that regard. So you're going to see another sale where upwards of 60, 70, 80 videos are coming your way. I want to make sure that people see what we're looking at so that as soon as the horses are sold, they can take quick, quick reference to that. And if we didn't happen to do a video on that horse, for whatever particular reason, I guess the number one reason would be, I personally believe the horse would bring way too much money. And for whatever reason, that horse is slid. A uh, perfect example would be, I'm Hill on Wheels uh, in, in Lexington or, uh, Better's Hope or Keystone Raven. Those were horses that I thought would bring much more money than they did, but I was there waiting and ready in case they did not. Now you may laugh. People may laugh and say, well, who are you to say what they're worth? You're right. Who am I saying? Uh, I take my job very seriously and I believe I have a pretty good eye when it comes to what a horse is worth. More times than not, I'm pretty close to what they're going to bring at a public auction unless you get in some insane bidding war like the, the Damien's or the Maverick, Mavericks, in which case, who knows? But uh, I sent those five horses earlier in the video because I thought that there was to, some value to be found, even though I still believe, believe they'll bring a lot of money. Who knows? If we luck out, we have enough interest in some of those horses, we may be able to get two of them. Maybe. Maybe not. But for all the rest of us, like me and most of you out there watching this, uh, you know, we're going to have large groups of people make up the ownership groups of these horses. This list right here that I'm going to send you 25 horses of the tons that I have in here, 25 that I believed, um, one were good looking and two hopefully might be undervalued. If you hear a number on here, this is like bingo, like horse bingo. If you hear a number on here 
that catches your eye and you're interested in, drop me a line, ask me, you know, what's the what's your hard line? What do you think this horse will bring? Obviously, I want to see the horse in person, so um, I can give you a rough idea, but after I get a real good look at the horse, I'll have a more firm grip on what we're interested in, what we're looking at. Um, but, as I said, this sale is not like the other sales. This is the, the, the last big sale of the year. I've been running around putting money together to pay for the other sales and I explained quite uh, emphatically why I did that this year in the other video. This sale is, uh, this is the end of the road. So, um, you know, the old cupboard's a little bare when it comes to Harrisburg. So I wanna make sure that our clients speak up. It's very, very important that you speak up if there's a horse on this list or on the other list or any list and you say, well, I'll wait and see what he gets him for. If we get him, then I'll, I'll make my decision. If we don't have interest in these horses, I'm not bidding on them. So um, it's pretty hard for me to do that. Sure, I can reach out to clients and say, hey, do you want to buy a piece of this horse or a piece of that horse? I would like our clients to speak up and say, especially now, especially for this sale, speak up and say, hey, uh, what's your hard line on that horse? I have some interest in that horse, potentially. That would help me out immensely. So we're going to get to the list. Number first one is number six. Uh, Swan, Swan Song Blue Chip, this horse almost made it onto my top list, but the breeding just simply wasn't there. I had talked to a couple of people at Blue Chip um, about this horse. I was a little perplexed as how this horse landed on number six, when he certainly didn't look like a number six horse. His video looks like a number six horse, but not his pedigree, so I'm a little, I was a little perplexed how he ended up there. Um, gonna see how that turns out, but I'm gonna be watching number six, Swan Song Blue Chip, very, very closely in this sale. Next, we have to wait quite a ways to get to number 94, Caruso. Now, Caruso is a Father Patrick. The sale prices at Father Patrick's were extremely high, driven by uh, Maverick in uh, in Lexington, but nevertheless, still very, very high. This is a second full from the muscle mare named Tosca. Raced a two, took a lifetime mark, ended up with a mark of 156 and two. She is a sister to Guccio, Lagerfeld, Winstrel. These are horses that, uh, at least the front two, are, are horses that have done very, very well. Uh, Guccio, uh, $1.021 million, million dollars made. Uh, mark of 151 and four on a five eights, and then Lagerfeld, mark of 53 and two on a five eights, and just a tick short of three quarters of a million dollars made. Good family, good looking video, really interested in number 94, Tosca. Number 106, Sevenwood. This is a uh, sister to Fashion Woodchopper. Well, they already get the updates on. Fashion Woodchopper, oh no, they're just testing them. Go away. Uh, this is a chapter seven, um, half sister to Fashion Wood Chopper. Took America 153 as a two year old. Beat me in the final of the Pennsylvania Sire Stakes with their boy Lawmaker. Fashion Wood Chopper didn't come back good as, th as good at three. Ended up with $437,000 made. Still a good family. This is a chapter seven. Probably can't afford her, but gonna keep an eye on her. Uh, next we go to number 111, The Talent. The talent is also a, is a Father Patrick. This is out of a sister to same old different day, same old different day. Again, another really good two-year-old that didn't come back super at three. Uh, took a mark of 54 and two as a two-year-old, made $355,000. Um, Lindy's True Grit is down in the third dam. Another horse might be a little pricey. These Father Patricks are probably gonna demand a pretty good penny. But on the off chance that this one does not, 111 is on our list, that is the talent. Spy Booth is a Muscle Hill, a Muscle Hill uh, brother to King Alfonso. Now, let's see what the updates are on this guy. King Alfonso, oh Lord. King Alfonso took a mark of 152 at two, made 128,000. Probably not gonna be able to afford this one. Spy Booth is a full brother to King Alfonso, now with a mark of 152. Is it two, really, is it two year old? Yeah, 152 is a two-year-old. Won the International Stallion in... Yeah, we're not getting this guy. Uh, 113. Next is 134. Axe Blue Chip, another blue chip horse. This is out of a sister to Lucky Chucky. Go away, updates. Up, uh, Lucky Chucky, a Chapter 7 uh, Colt. Good-looking Colt. Has a nice video. Obviously, a good pedigree of horse. We are going to keep our eye on. Next is number 146. Darlene Hanover. Darlene Hanover is a Chapter 7 filly out of a first full 
untrained due to injury. Thank you for that. First foal out of a sister to Donato Hanover. And here comes Herbie. Uh, strong family, good family, good looking filly. I shouldn't have to speak anymore about Darlene. Darlene Hanover is the horse we're going to be looking at. 151 derailed Hanover is out of. Now, this is interesting. This is a Cantab Hall filly out of that family. Now, this is a big family. This would be foal number 13. Foal number 13, the sister to Donato Hanover. And here comes Herbie. Now, before you get too excited, there are other brothers, sisters in there that are not as good as here comes Herbie and Donato Hanover. But this, let me make sure before I say this, and over, and over, and over, Muscle Hill, SG's Caviar. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but I don't believe it is. This is the first Cantab Hanover, Cantab Hall in this family. Goes to the saying. Number 170, Get Touch. Get Touch Hanover. What the hell is this? Get Touch Hanover. This is at a girl's touch, made $70,000. Uh, six foals, six winners. Heaven's Door leads the way with 240 and then three and a quarter internationally. Now, here's something that, that it was funny. Steve Plermo and I were talking about this morning. They'll tell you internationally made 300000 Exactly. How'd that happen? How do you make 300000 exactly? Is it just a rough estimate or did you get it? So when you look at this, this horse internationally made $327,878. That is a number. 300000 That makes it sound fictitious. So I'm going to keep this right here. Uh, get Touch Hanover. Good video. Good family. Uh, even the second dam, you're looking at I'm the answer. 52 and 4 and a 5 eighths. 366000 made here. 675000 and $23 made internationally. Number 170, Get Touch Hanover. What a good looking horse. Number 186, he so hot Hanover. This is a bar hopping. Really like this horse's video. Brother to Hockey Hanover, who was sold for pretty good money up here in Ontario. Brad Grant bought this horse off of the Burke Brigade. Second dam is Grand Panano Hot Mess Hanover. Good family, good looking video on the Colt by bar hopping. Number 186, he so hot Hanover. Next, Eliza B. This is a Chapter 7 Philly raised at Blue Chip. Why is there a Blue Chip? Oh, Arden Homestead Stable. Um, this is a first foal by Dewey Cheatham and Howe. I wonder how the Dewey mares are going to go. I know Steve was talking about that. I'm interested too because we have a Dewey mare. Dewey Cheatham and Howe mare, sister to Bruchette. Now, Bruchette, I know I looked earlier, has a horse in the sale. This Chapter chapter 7 Philly looks really, really athletic in her video. Really like what I saw from her. A horse that is on my number, my top list. Remember I told you in my other video, I'm sure you watched them. <laughs> uh, I had 10, whittled it down to five. Five I wanted to talk about, five that stayed on the number one list but didn't get talked about. One of those horses is Tesseract. Tesseract, an EL Titan horse. I love this horse's video. I like everything about him. Uh, just a really, really good, or her, a really, really good looking filly. Uh, first fall from a mare who raced around here a little bit. Marabou wasn't a killer. 19 wins, $111,000 made. Uh, it's funny because we, as we were talking about international money, you know, here's a horse, Victory Bonsai, made exactly 300000 internationally. How do you do that? So let me just make that number up. Or 32 wins and $300,000 made internationally. So he was a racehorse. Uh, second dam is, look at Victory and Keenan's in the second dam. Um, a really, really good looking colt, or, or Philly. I really like the video on Number 234, Tesseract 237, Seven Nation Army. I know where this one, I saw this video earlier. Uh, the breeding just wasn't strong enough to get on to our top list, but I rather, uh, I really liked, that's not true, there's a horse that made 589,000 in the top dam, 400 in the second dam. So for whatever reason, she didn't make it on my top, top list. But uh, 237, Seven Nation Army, probably can't afford her anyway by the looks of this video and pedigree, but nevertheless, horse will be watching close. Now here's a horse, that I really, really liked its video. Its pedigree isn't strong. This is a horse that we could potentially buy. You have Erwin DeVee, number 238 from Joie de V Farms. This is, uh, this mare's had two previous foals. Neither of them were much good at all. Um, I shouldn't say much good. One of them made $107,000. They're both credit winners. This is a bar hopping moving from New York to Pennsylvania. Um, first dam's a little light. Second dam's nothing to write home about. Money counts to V, 55, uh, $194,000 made. Chocolata to V, uh, 54 and 4, 138000 And then down in the third dam, you have world champion cookout. 
uh, who we'd grill now, but no killers in there. Just a really, really athletic looking big filly. This was a bar hopping filly, number 238, um, Arwen DeVee. Jumping ahead a little bit, uh, EL Titan, number 265, Night Owl Hanover. Now, here, here's an interesting thing. I like the horse's video. I was looking at its pedigree. Geez, you know, you got really hung up on that second dam, Naysay Hanover, $1.2 million made, 33 wins. You take Naysay Hanover. Remember we did this with the with the filly I like from London. You take Naysay Hanover out of this pedigree. There's nothing really to talk about until way down in the fourth dam. So an interesting little uh, tidbit here, number 265, Night Owl Hanover. Good video. You, you can't take the horse out of there. She's there. So Naysay Hanover, $1.2 million in the second dam. Where are we at here? Simply Blue Chip. This is another EL Titan, uh, EL Titan filly. Pedigree's okay that we've bid on and bought some horses in the same pedigree. Actually, Steve has a horse, I believe. Might be Andover Hall. No, I think it's Andover Hall. But if you look down, you have Donato Hanover and Here Comes Herbie in the third dam. I have a horse that has Donato Hanover and Here Comes Herbie in the second dam and a horse that has Donato Hanover and Here Comes Herbie in the first dam on this list. So... 267 simplify simplify sorry simplify blue chip um okay looking on his pedigree but good looking video again a lot of these i like the pedigree there's a lot there's a lot of pedigrees to like at harrisburg and lexington so i start with a really rough list then i look at the videos cross the ones off that i don't like their videos i'll take a horse off because of its video but i won't necessarily just put one on because of its video. Now, there's exceptions to every rule, but that's how I go about whittling our list. I look at horses that are likely affordable. If they're unlikely to be affordable, then why look at them? I mean, there has to be a way to narrow that narrow that field. And um, pedigrees I like, you know, confirmed with videos. If, if there's checks on both of those, they'll make it onto one of my lists. There's a lot of lists here, but uh, both, if both look really strong and make sense to talk about, then that's why you're hearing about them right now simplified blue chip is one of those now i'm going to tell you something uh this horse came to me from steve so i hope i'm not betraying him here but um number 290 pecan sandy hanover terrible well, not a terrible name a weird name but there's not a ton to look at on this video but this horse or on this pedigree a little bit you look down on the third dam which is fair ball you see broadway schooner who's a mother of uh cooler schooner real cool sam was a favorite in the breeders crown finished second this year i believe he was second maybe third third maybe but pecan sandy hanover has an incredible video this horse a beautiful horse pennsylvania eligible cantab hall colt i don't know if i called it a philly i'm sorry if i did but a colt pecan sandy hanover just a really really good video i liked the pedigree i love the video number 290 and the pedigree is just a a little bit soft in spots. This is the type of horse you really could afford. So number 290, Pecan Sandy Hanover is a horse I'm keeping a very, very close eye on. Where are we at here? We're all the way up to number 360, another blue chip horse. Billions blue chip, another chapter seven. Again, decent pedigree. Um, Jordan blue chip was a decent two and three year old. The second dam is Laddie who was trotting cold to the year in 2006. Strong, pretty strong pedigree, not super strong. Strong enough where might go for more than we think, but uh, I guess I don't want to say the word weak. Uh, soft enough that we may be able to afford this horse and good looking video along with it. I want to take a look at Billions Blue Chip when I get to Harrisburg. Blue Moon V. this was sent to us. Now, for those of you people out there that send me emails and think I don't read them or, or don't listen to you, there's a couple of horses that are on this list that were put on this list because of our clients, um, because of our clients sending them, and Blue Moon to V is one of these horses. For whatever reason, this is a Cadaver Colt. We're short on Ontario Sire Trotting Colts. Not short, but we only have three. So Blue Moon to V. This is a Cadaver Colt. The mare has eight foals, seven winners. Lola de V is the top one, four hundred thousand made in the second dam. Second dam and third dam is not strong. Second dam is not that strong. Third dam, you might say, what about this horse Brazen that made a quarter of a million? Uh, I had Brazen in 2007. <laughs> we bought him off Jimmy Tactor. We did okay with him, but he was a massive underachiever. Um, took a good mark. I think we went in 56. Maybe they did. We tried him 54, 55 for us. But uh, not a horse that I loved, but he was fast. He did make money. So Brazen's in the third dam. This is a decent pedigree and a good-looking horse. The video really surprised me. So... Um, 
you know, I was really, really happy to see um, to see our clients involved in sending me pedigrees like this. Really happy with this horse. And now it's on the list, number 470, Blue Moon. So thank you very much, Larry. Uh, number 541 is another bar hopping. Amy actually brought this one to my attention. Now, hoo -hoo, it's a tough one. This horse is affordable. I love the video. The pedigree looks good. Look close. Looks real good. Second dam, Emil Angus. Only made 191, but then went over to Europe, 240,100. 240, Goliath Angus, decent. Imperial Angus only made 101, but I remember that horse. He did it the hard way. Decent horse. These, decent pedigree. Then you look at the first first mare, you're like, oh, Big Rich. That's the horse that Richard Murrow races in the open. 26 wins. 432,000 made. Second one's an international money. Dewey Cheatham and Howe. Or, or international, made international money to Dewey Cheatham and Howe. Let's cut him some slack. Wait now. This is the 10th full. The 10th full. Big Rich and a couple of scrappy horses are really all that's on here. Big risk. Not Big Rich. Big risk on 541. You're batting 3 for 10 on this one. And 1 for 10, really, of, of any horses that are of any consequence. Hit the board is a 2-year-old racing, apparently, explosive matter. Uh, Dewey Scrapper. Not that great. Five wins internationally. That could be anywhere. Big Rich. I know they've had problems with Big Rich. He makes a lot of breaks. He's a goofball. Um, but this horse does have a very interesting video. So 541. Now, I'll be honest. I'm going to try and contain myself and hold it down to six horses. Six horses at Harrisburg. I'd like to buy one. Jeez, it would be great if we could buy two on that top list. I do like a couple of muscle massives. Pretty partial to us. Uh, between White Tiger and Lawmaker. Um, the filly last year, you know, she had some issues where we had to take OCDs out and she got tired at the end of the year. She was okay, Rosa and Versatile. Uh, I expect her to be a better three-year-old. Those are, are uh, those are our, uh, muscle massives. So um, when you look at it, one from here, let's say you get one of the muscle massives, a couple later in the sale. That only leaves you two for the middle part of the middle part of the sale I don't know if casual affair is that fit, is going to fit the bill I don't know if we can punch him a ticket on the trailer but uh, I guess that'll be dependent on value won't it uh, big risk here though big risk at one decent horse out of ten in this mare just I left him on the list I left this Philly sorry Philly on the list just because I liked your video now I liked a video that kept her on the list it didn't put her on the list there's a lot of pedigree there there's just a lot missing um now, here comes the first muscle massive, number 573. Amy and I both love this horse. Now, this is a brother to a horse that won everything at two in Imperial Count. His name is Mystical King. Here's a funny little thing. If you guys go back, and I'm sure the catalog on YouTube, if you guys go back and look at our video last year of Mystical Kevin, this is the horse that literally almost killed someone. He kicked with both back legs and just missed somebody. And we had the video of it. I'm pretty sure we had the video playing when he did. We did a video of him. I liked the horse. I bid on the horse. Now, Irv Miller and his partner own this horse. They are partners with View Car Farms. They also partnered up with Mystical Kevin last year, and Irv Miller bought this horse back. Now, does he like Mystical Kevin? He didn't race this year. Does he like him? Did he not like him? Does this mean he's not bidding on this horse, or is he going to buy this one also? I have no idea, but I remember the name Mystical Kevin because I know what he did at the sale yesterday in Harrisburg. I remember it like it was yesterday. I know where we were standing. I know where the guy behind him was standing, and he'll never do that again. Uh, number 573, Mystical King. Number 604. Now, this is an Angus Halt. Very interesting horse. Steve Palermo and I had a heated discussion. No, we never had a heated discussion. We are joking. But a thorough discussion about Angus Hall. Uh, why you don't see that many. The, Angus Hall is an older horse. He stands at wind back. They're going to breed anything to Angus Hall just to try and maximize. He, he's in his twilight, right? Angus Hall is considered a, an ancient sire now. And not a lot of people are going to be uh, in a big hurry to buy Angus Halls. Now, here's the kicker. This horse is out of overnight command. Overnight Command has thrown four foals. One of them to speak of, this horse was a Chapter 7 named Third Shift. Third Shift was in the Breeders' Crown this year. Let's look at the update. Third Shift. Come on, show me. Third Shift, three wins. Now cataloged $210,000 made. This horse won the final of the New York Sire Stakes. The brother, 
the brother to this filly, don't pass judgment. She has got a huge, she's a huge filly, big video, doesn't really look like an Angus Hall, which is also interesting. So number 604, again, Larry had this horse on his list that he sent to us, Amy had this horse on the list, and Anthony had this horse on the list. Number 604, very interesting filly here, uh, don't pass judgment. Number 604, really interested in her. Uh, what else we got here? 616, all for one, all for one Hanover. This is Swan for All. So for Kenny and a couple other people that are very interested in some Swan for Alls, got one for you right here. Number 616, all for one, all for one Hanover. Good looking filly, nice video. Again, uh, five for six in the top dam, in the top dam, $239,000 made here with one of them. Um, second dam is one that made 210 a win songs a win song legacy third dam pitcher sealster made four hundred thirty six thousand dollars and for the love of money was in there also she's the mayor of something anyway Paige sealster's in here too uh a good family good looking horse swan for all out of hanover no idea what this indiana bred trotting colt will bring but i am going to keep an eye on him Getting to the bottom of them now, we have 677. This is Stone Chip Hall, uh, the other muscle massive I really, really like. Great videos on both these horses. Um, this horse has a brother, sister? Sister, that made $300,000. Second dam has money in it. Third dam has money in it. I know, second dam is long. Second dam has lots of money in it. Uh, good looking horse here. Really like the video from the Sam Zook Farm in Amfrata, Pennsylvania. Concord Stud is selling this horse for Sam, and this is number 744, uh, Muscle Massive Colt named Stone Chip Hall. Number 830, why would you say this? Now, I'll be clear, I almost didn't put this horse on my list, I just really like everything about 830 Hard Row. We have a ton of Ohio Sire Trotting Phillies, some really talented ones too. We don't really need any more, but this, video's, this horse's video really, really impressed me. It's a triumphant caviar. Not high on our list of horses to buy. Had two foals. Neither were that good. This is the third foal. Over for 2. Heading into strike number 3. Hard row and a triumphant caviar to boot. Just a great looking video though. In the second dam, it is pretty hard to dismiss. Traveling super light. Who's the mare? Through poof, she's gone. And a host of other good horses. Hard row. I can't imagine that we will still have a spot left in our trailer at number 830. But if we do, and the price is right, Hard Row could easily be coming home with us. Another horse that we haven't heard much from sire-wise this entire sale season, Sebastian K. I didn't find one that I liked in Lexington. I have found a few that are on this list that I like, and the number one, that the one that I like the most, is Doriano, Sebastian K. Colt, selling from Spring Haven. I like this horse's video. The mother had a mark of 54, 163,000 made. She is a um, two winners out of four. She is a Cantab Hall mare, upskirt, 40,000 credit winner. And then we have Jubila Jubilarian. Wow. Uh, Donato Hanover, $19,000 made. Second dam is a dam of Sirocco Rob, another horse I dealt with with Lawmaker quite a bit in his career. Um, and then down the bot, you plan it. Planet Jenner. Um, I like this horse's video. I like this horse's pedigree. I like everything about Doriano. Uh, just don't know if we'll still be sticking around for Doriano when he goes through the ring. And then here's an interesting little thing. I want to know why this horse is way, way down here. I don't really understand it. Uh, maybe there's an issue with this horse. Number 848, Vitor. Now, Vitor has a strong family. I know a lot of the horses in the second dam. Third dam's very, very strong. This is a Cadaver Colt, Ontario, and New Jersey, a New Jersey Standard Red Fund eligible. So, Ontario and New Jersey Standard Red Fund eligible. Out of dual, do a lot of cheating. This is a Dewey Cheatham and Howe mare. Took a three-year-old qualifying mark of 55, made $50,000. Has thrown two foals, one in EL Titan, now two. The other one is a credit winner, Philly. Uh, she's been exported, if I believe this is right. Second dam duo, duo, duo Valcar was a very good mare herself. Made 200,000, uh, 56, 13 wins. She threw Valvec, who was tough as iron. I raced against him a lot in the early 2000s. And then the third dam, you, have, you had a dream. This is an extremely strong family and a good family and a great looking video. I can't for the life of me figure out why the source is way, way back at 848. But if we happen to need a horse, 848 will fit in just fine. 
So that is a whole bunch of horses I like. I have a ton of horses and other lists to look at. Uh, and to be honest also, and I said it in the other video and I'll say it again right now, uh, we are looking at getting a couple of racehorses. I don't have a racehorse list for you guys because really, I want to know why they're in the sale. If they're just two-year-olds that are, you know, they're, they're just not fitting in with that firm or we're just not, they're not interested in keeping them along. Okay, fine. But what about, uh, what about um, some aged horses, right? Some horses that people are just trying to raise capital, much like we're doing selling Lincoln James. There's a number of reasons to keep them and sell them. Obviously, I think he's going to make somebody a real good horse, and I don't think we can even let him go for less than twenty-four, twenty-five thousand dollars. But uh, a lot of people do want to buy yearlings, and the easiest way to raise capital is to put their race horses in the Harrisburg sale. It's a one-off. Spend ten thousand dollars on a yearling, sell your horse for ten thousand dollars. Just got to pay the fees. So um, a lot of people put their horses in the Harrisburg sale. So we want to look through that sale, look at what is interesting to us. We have a number of two-year-olds that are resting and coming back, so they aren't on the top of our list. But if the right horse strikes, uh, you know, if we come across the right horse, then we'll see. But for the most part, uh, for the most part, we are looking for racehorses. We have a number of them, and I'm happy with what we have. But if there are some that are very interesting in the sale, we are going to have a look at them. So that is... Uh, a quick overview of what I see from the sale. I gave you 25 horses right there that I think are affordable, hopefully affordable. I gave you five that I think are gonna be a little more expensive. And what I'm looking for, obviously, and I'll say it again, feedback. Need some feedback from our clients. Would love to have people message me, email me, call me and say, hey, I like hip number whatever you're looking at. If you, what do you think the horse will bring? And if it does bring that, I am interested. We've had a few people do that already. Thank you very much. I uh, had some wonderful insight from Larry and a couple other clients that had said, these are the horses I'm interested in. I'm sure you are also. Uh, what do you think they'll bring? I'm in for this. That helps me a ton. I re it really, really helps me do my job. So if you don't mind, uh, have a look at the videos. Take a look at the horses. If you're interested in Harrisburg, you see something on our list that you like, reach out, call me, text me, email me. I'll, well, of course I'm going to be around. Uh, it is a miserable, rotten, cold, rainy day here in Ontario. It's going to be rotten right through till tomorrow. We're going to get the baby's jug tomorrow and Saturday, and then I'm off to Harrisburg. Talk to you guys soon. Stay out of the rain.